Hey guys, welcome to another week of church here at Rose of Sharon Baptist. Uh, we're glad you can join us. Um, I hope that through this process of these videos, you've been blessed. And I hope that we'll continue to bless you through these videos. So please join me as we listen to what David's saying to us today. Well, it's a delight to come to you again today to present to you what the Lord has put in my heart this week from his word. But before I get into that, I just wanted to say... I have had the chance to chat with some of you over the phone who are part of this congregation, and I, I agree with you how difficult it is not to get together. I have really missed the gathering of God's people together at a place of worship, as I know you are, and I'm looking forward to that time when we can gather again. We are at the stage in this pandemic where now there is discussion moving from the degree of illness to how do we get ourselves back to some kind of regular life? How long will that take? A lot of questions being asked. And of course, it's going to take time to sort that out. And so I know that uh, we look forward to gathering again. Don't know when it will be exactly yet, but what a delight it'll be to come together and sing together, worship together and be together with times of prayer and sharing in God's house. Looking forward to it. Even more so, looking forward to the time when we, as God's people, will gather around his throne forever. No more disease, no more interruptions to come our way. So I thought it would be a fitting today, if just before we get into God's word, that we would stop and pray. Pray for the situation in our land, in our province, and pray for those who are responsible for these decisions. So would you just join me in praying together? Dear God, we thank you for those who lead in our communities, those in healthcare, those in government, those in business, those who are serving as volunteers for all of the first responders that are doing their very best to keep up with all the needs of the community. And Lord, we pray for their safety and their protection, we pray, Lord, for, their, uh, for them to have wisdom from you as to how to proceed to begin to move us back to where we can again have some freedoms to gather in a way that would not jeopardize health. So we ask that you would give them wisdom for the right kind of balance. And now, Lord, as we look at your word today, I pray that you would guide us, teach us, just direct our thoughts and our hearts so that as we are fed from your word, our, our hearts will be drawn closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of having your word. Teach us by your Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, as I was asking the Lord what it is that he would have me to share from his word with you as a congregation and those beyond this congregation, I was led in my own heart to Psalm 1. Psalm 1 is a very interesting psalm. It's a great contrast psalm between the ungodly or the wicked and those who want to do what's right. And that reality of that decision or that fork in the road faces all of us throughout all of life. But I know that there are times in our life when we, meet, when we reach decision points and there's a fork and we have to make a decision. And so I don't know if you've ever had the experience of getting lost on a trip, but you can take a turn and you think it's the right turn. And the longer you proceed on the path that is not the correct path, the farther and farther you get away from what is where you want to be. And so, of course, the decisions we make at those forks in the road are very, very critical. And it's necessary for us to be sure that we're taking the right path. And so as we look at Psalm 1 today, we're going to see there's some very interesting direction and, 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 and prom, promises here as to how to know what is the right path to take in life so we have a good outcome. So I'd like to read through it, then we're going to look at some attributes that we find from these few six verses of this chapter. So Psalm chapter 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he does or doeth shall prosper. The ungodly or the wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. These few verses speak to some very large topics. Let's start off with verse one. Blessed or happy. The word blessed means happy. Happy not necessarily as a result of a single event, but blessed or happy as a result of a path in life. And the word blessed here, or happy, speaks to the negative side of how to act so that you do not ruin the happiness that God wants for us. Blessed or happy is the person who does not. And there's three things there that are mentioned. First one is, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now the word ungodly there, we could... Uh, translate into the word wicked. It's the word wicked. And I have on your outline there in the bulletin, if you're filling that in as we go through, blessed is the person who does not walk following the advice of the wicked. Don't follow the advice of the wicked. Of course, in order not to follow their advice, we need to understand what are, what is a wicked person? What are the characteristics of someone who's wicked? So I can identify that advice not to follow. And so I want to just have you turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. And there's a very interesting description there of how Solomon, in his writings by the Holy Spirit, describes wickedness. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walks with a froward mouth. He winks with his eyes. He speaks with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He sows discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. It's a very strong word. A proud look a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. It's quite a long list. I've put them there on your outline as a quick sort of set of bullet points as attributes that you can identify to help you know the characteristics of the wicked such that we would turn away from their advice. So what are these? Let's summarize them. First of all, has a dishonest mouth, a froward mouth, a dishonest mouth. Uh, secondly, uses winks and gestures to deceive others. This person is deceptive in their signaling and their antics. A perverse heart that plots mischief. I think the good word to summarize that is a troublemaker. A troublemaker. And one of the characteristics that's included in this list in Proverbs is that this wicked person is prone to sudden irrecoverable calamity. When God's judgment comes upon those who are wicked, it is something that they will not be able to survive. What an awesome caution to those who would follow wicked ways. Then on with the list, it says, a wicked person will be known as one having a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that injure and even kill innocent people. Severe. And plans wicked schemes. A wicked person is eager to do evil. A wicked person is known as being a lying witness and a lying witness or a false witness is comprised of three attributes. They can come up with fabricated, exaggerated, or partial stories. 
leaving out the full truth. And lastly, one who spreads strife in a community or one who sows discord among brethren. Um, that list is a great checklist. If you want to go through those who are your contacts or colleagues or friends or circle of acquaintances in your life and you say, am I taking the advice of wicked people? Are any of these characteristics true from their life? Is it true in my life? Do I need to repent of these things and turn to what would be righteous ways? This is a great list to warn us. Secondly there, it says, blessed is the man that not only walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, he does not stand in the way of sinners. He doesn't stand around or hang out with those living knowingly disobedient to God. I mean, we're all sinners. All of us have the tendency in our heart from conception to be self-centered and selfish and wanting our own way. So it's not that we're saying that we're not sinners and some people are. We're all sinners. But this little phrase speaks to a very interesting characteristic. Hanging out with those who knowingly live disobedient to God. Be careful. Um, there's some very interesting passages of scripture. I'm going to just read here in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, those committed to living their own selfish ways, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Don't be sucked into their ways or to their relationship, hanging out with them. And then the third thing is, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. Happy is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way with sinners or hang out with sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. Sit around and join in with a group of mockers. Very important. In Galatians 6 verse 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. What an... What a sobering thought. Be careful what you're sowing in life. And those who are mockers must understand that if they're mocking God, that's a sure loss. You will lose that, that, that contest with God. So these three things, you're happy and blessed if you stay away from the advice of wicked don't hang out with those disobedient to God, knowingly disobedient to God, and don't hang out or join in with group of mockers. Avoid them. Avoid the mockers. There's a verse in Psalm 7, verse 11. It says, God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So we don't want to be part of the wicked crowd. We're going to experience God's anger. Every day. Then verse 2. It gives the alternative. And it says there, instead of these negative things, like joining in with those who are wicked, standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the seat of the scorn, instead of those act actions in our life, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Instead, delight in God's law, review, reviewing it day and night. Day and night is an interesting picture. It's not like we go around like zombies all day trying to fulfill our duties at the same time quoting scripture. That's not the point. But the idea that both are mentioned is an interesting encouragement for us to, to start our day and to end our day with times in God's word, reminding ourselves as to what God's moral standards are. Why? Why would this be the instruction? Well, I got three things to suggest here. Number one, reviewing God's word reveals God's character. His word is made up of describing who he is. He is a perfect example of how to live. We can never become God because we're sinners saved by his grace. But we have the example of how to live. It motivates us to the right direction. Number two, it keeps a check on our selfishness. Checking in with God's word and reviewing it a couple times a day is a way to just 
stop us in our tracks when we're going down selfish ways. And thirdly, it calls us to return to what is right when we stray. And there are times in our life where we, we, where we will stray. We'll get off the track. Emotionally, in relationships, things that we begin to value, we could get off track. And if we look at God's word, it'll call us back to what is his way and what is right in his sight. Joshua 1.8 this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. What a promise. And over in Psalm 112, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. That's the encouragement in this psalm. Instead, be a, one, be a person who delights in God's law. Love to have the direction it gives. And then verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Again, a blessed promise. Whatever you do will prosper if you follow this instruction. The result of following this direction from God to delight in his word will result in a healthy, others-oriented, rewarding life, no matter what comes along. No matter what comes along. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. I love the little word season there in that verse. It says, there bringeth forth his fruit in his season. At the appointed time is what the season means. At the appointed time. And there are stages in our lives where, where God prepares us for all kinds of things. And then at a certain place, we're able to really experience bountifully God using us for his purposes. That's a season. Like a tree, like a fruit tree has its season for producing fruit. And so it is in our life. And the rest of the year is spent in preparation, even in dormancy, preparing for what it is that God has in mind. And that word um, bringing forth the fruit in its season is an interesting concept as well because um, we have fruit that comes from our life that gives to supply others. It gives to supply others. And then the little phrase that follows, his leaf also shall not wither. Now, if you think about the life of a tree, we are, we'll, we are all blessed by the fruit that a tree gives. Lemons, oranges, bananas, apples, grapefruit, cherries, all the different fruits that we love to eat from a tree. Food for our lives. But also a tree through its leaves gives us oxygen. It continues to supply us even through the leaves. What we need for life. Psalm Three verse or Proverbs 3 verse 33 says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just or those who do what is right. And then Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's the life of a good man, a good woman. They'll continue to provide blessing to others. And then in verse 4 of Psalm 1, we get a warning. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. This is a verse to remind us that God has declared and said very clearly here that the wicked will ultimately be blown away. The wicked will ultimately be blown away. God will deal with it. He will judge. And they'll be gone. Psalm 37, verse 35 and 36 say, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Gone. That's the end of what God says will happen to those who are wicked. And then verse 5 and 6. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish.
And point five on your outline, the wicked will not survive God's judgment, whereas those that do what is right will be rewarded by God. I'm not sure if you've really thought through life's paths in the terms of wicked and righteous, doing what is right, seeking to do what's right, or just going with whatever seems expedient for selfish interest. But we have a choice to make. It's our choice. Sometimes we get pressured by friends or family or colleagues at work. We can get pressured into certain decisions. But I want to encourage you today that this choice between living according to ungodly ways or living according to godly ways is a choice that each of us have. And in our life, we're often tempted to delay our choices. We think about it, well, I'll just go with it today, I'll deal with it tomorrow. But don't delay. My encouragement to you today, based on Psalm 1, is don't delay. Choose God's way, not wickedness. Psalm 11, verse 6 and 7. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, brimstone and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord, righteous Lord, loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. The Lord is drawn and draws to himself those who love him and want to follow his ways. I trust today as you think through your life and you think the decisions uh, that come your way will be necessarily um, sometimes clearly laid out in terms of what's right and what's wrong, wrong, right. But often it's kind of subtle. And ask yourself, Lord, show me from your word what would be the right thing to do. And then we'll have the joy of being what God promises to be like a tree that brings blessing to others. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for this very simple little psalm that lays out one of the most critical decisions of life. Will I focus my life on selfish interests and wicked ways or will I turn my heart to yearning and following your ways? And Lord, today for those who are watching who may not have yet made that choice, I pray that you'd give them courage to choose to follow you. And for those who have made that choice, but at times wander or stray, may you remind us, Lord, of how important it is to really day by day, afresh, look into your word, get fresh direction from you so that our lives may stay on the right path, a path that you promise to bless. And we look forward to how you will Bring this to pass in each person's life as we walk trusting and obeying you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you.